He's one of the privileged few political leaders to have lived beyond a century and witnessed four regimes in the country. Charles Mugani Njonjo, Kenya's first black attorney general, would have turned 102 later this month. His was an eventful life that includes nearly two decades on the corridors of the country's political power. Here now is a look back on Jonjo's life when he turned 100 years almost two years ago. He always stood out for his abane, somehow aristocratic demeanor. A dashing young lawyer donning designer suits spoke the Queen's language with perfect diction and his law career at top flight level. The justice will dispense under the shadow of the blind goddess on top of this building. And uh, I knew Charles when, uh, before I became a member of parliament, before independence, mm -hmm. he had just come back as a, a young lawyer from having qualified as a, as a lawyer in England. And he, was, he came back under colonial government at that time to join the Attorney General's office. And now he grew through the system. Charles Njonjo started out as Crown Counsel handling cases under companies and bankruptcy ordinance in the Supreme Court. He also doubled up as the Assistant Registrar General up to 1960. As Kenya's independence beckoned, Charles Njonjo's star was burning brighter in the colonial administration. At the age of 42 years and just one year to Kenya's independence, he became the deputy director of public prosecutions. He was now in, in involved in the group that uh, we were preparing for independence, but he was from the, for the government side. So when he became independent, he was one of the senior legal officers uh, who helped now in uh, organizing a new government. He was the speeding up of Africanizing the various senior positions. Uh, so Charles was picked as the Attorney General because of the African uh, the, uh, councils at the, at the Attorney General's office. He was um, one of the most senior. Sir Charles, as he's known, thanks to his penchant for all things British, including his signature pinstriped suits, joined the first 15 member cabinet as Attorney General. I'm puzzled from where is it? Burudi Nabuera was deployed to Washington, D.C. as Kenya's ambassador. When I was in America, we, we used to correspond, and he was, very, he was very helpful, he was very kind, very helpful to me. Whenever I had a problem to sort out the government, he was always available. Uh, even if it was something that he was to talk to Mze, he would, he would convey my message to Mze, or talk to Mze. Then Mze would tell him what he wanted me to do. So. In that respect, even in my official capacity, uh, Charles became very useful to me. Charles Njonjo had President Kenyatta's ear and often rode in the presidential limousine. His hand was felt in all key decisions taken by President Kenyatta, including the appointment of Daniel Arap Moy as Kenya's third vice president when Joseph Murumbi suddenly resigned. Njonjo ruled the legal scene like an opinionated roster interpreting and enforcing the law his way. He operated in a system in which he was more of a, a law enforcement, uh, a, a part of the law enforcement institution or the head of the law enfor enforcement institution in circumstances where the, the state, you know, was everything. And once he has to push uh, a, a motion or a bill for government, I, it always served its role. Njonjo was literally married to his job that he only settled down at the age of 52. He got married to Margaret Bryson in 1972 after pressure from his boss, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. It is rumored that Mze always wondered when he would stop being advised by a bachelor. 
it was not uncommon for Njonjo to sip lunchtime champagne while walking barefoot in Kenyatta's office at State House, Nairobi. With a stroke of the pen, Njonjo could deregister companies or deport foreigners. He could also sign detention orders from his house, jail or release prisoners. These powers made him enemies among colleagues. Indeed, his power was immense that he once rushed a constitutional amendment through parliament to allow Kenyatta to pardon Paul Ngei when a court of law barred Ngei from contesting a by-election for committing an election offence. He prosecuted fellow members of parliament, ignoring their pleas, including those made to the president. John Joe had very powerful allies. Uh, remember then the British still had the army in this country and they were in charge of the economy. Then came Kenyatta's death in 1978 and the succession intrigues that placed Njonjo on the driver's seat of the political transition as Attorney General. He had seen off a group of central Kenya politicians that noisily campaigned to prevent Moi from succeeding the aging Kenyatta. He outlawed talk and even imagination of Kenyatta's death. That immediately silenced the change the constitution movement and when Mze Kenyatta died on the 22nd of August 1978, Charles Njonjo very calmly read the law. Daniel Arab Moy is now president of Kenya for the next 90 days until an election is held for the future president of Kenya. Moy's ascendance to power marked a new face of influence for Charles Njonjo. Together with former Laikipia politician, the late Gigi Kariuki, and the man Moy had picked as his assistant, Emilio Mwai Kibaki. They constituted what was seen as a partnership presidency that saw them share a ride in a presidential limousine. Even smoking in Moy's car, and you know who Moy was. They were so powerful. But what surprised many people was how they were able to establish a rapport with that Kikuyu like, leadership. And I think that gave Jonjo then during the Moi presidency a lot of powers, at least in the, uh, the first half of the Moi uh, presidency. Without Jonjo, I very much doubt the course of Kenyan history would have been the same. Specifically, I doubt that Moi would have become president. The senator, who was then a member of the National Assembly, describes Njonjo as a skilled political schemer. Whenever he was in, in Parliament, you could see where the center of the power of the state was. Uh, it was personified and solidified in, in the person of, of Charles Njonjo. There were no mechanisms of challenging the constitutionality of any legislation enacted under his watch. Many political dissenters were detained without trial on minor offenses as Njonjo retained detention laws and ensured tough prison conditions for inmates. Kenya became a single party dictatorship after Njonjo lobbied parliament to amend the constitution. He moved, you know, the, the, the bill. Uh, it was seconded by Kibaki, who was then uh, cabinet minister. And then debate was closed. Nobody would uh, be allowed to, to speak. Uh, I, I think I was the only person who was able to, to throw in a word. Charles Njonjo made his office powerful by not only being at the center of political power and decision making, but also by straddling the police force, legal fraternity, and the civil service. He incorporated the Criminal Investigations Department, CID, and made it part of his chamber's criminal prosecution. But that only lasted for three years and the honeymoon was over. At one point, Moy asked me, 
what do people say John Joe is? So I told him, according to people, the most powerful person in this country is Charles John Joe. If he wants you in jail, even if you have not done anything at all, you are going to end up in jail. Funny enough, Moi started laughing at my answer. He laughed and laughed. Four years into Moi's role, a group of disgruntled Air Force servicemen briefly overthrew the government on the 1st of August 1982 before being overpowered by loyalist forces commanded by Brigadier Mahmoud Mohammed. It is an event that changed Moy forever. An insecure Moy moved to strip the ranks, getting rid of Charles Njonjo and constructing his power circle made of politicians and figures from his own Kalenjin tribe, such as the late Nicholas Biwot, who came to be known as Total Man. Moy knew if he is to be stable, and uh, to lead Kenya, he shouldn't have people like Jojo, who knew a lot and who had a lot of uh, uh, influence, both inside here and outside in the system. Having resigned as Attorney General to join politics, the then Kiku MP and powerful Constitutional Affairs Minister had gained political mileage in the large Mount Kenya region. And that is how Jojo's downfall started. I think Moi had always believed that Njonjo would not connect with the Kikuyu leadership. But surprisingly, they quickly connected. And they connected with other parts of the country. It was very easy there for, for them to take over power, Gigi Karioke and, and Njonjo. And therefore Moi had to get rid of Njonjo, definitely. Anybody would. Of course, that was in the African style. Traitor, what, what. But Burudi Nabuera believes that the allegations against Njonjo were all choreographed to crush his presidential ambitions, if at all he harbored any. For me, it is out of his character. It is not the Njonjo I know. But that marked the end of the road politically for Charles Njonjo. He resigned both as Minister for Constitutional Affairs and Member of Parliament for Kikuyu, never to resurface again on the political scene until the 2005 referendum campaigns when he joined Raila Odinga, Uhuru Kenyatta, William Ruto, Kalonzo Musyoka and others to oppose the Wako draft constitution. The Orange team carried the day. Two choices. Apart from the referendum, Jonjo has always lived a quiet private life away from cameras, but he once in a while ventured out, ending at the judiciary buildings at one time. The law does not see, the law has no hands. But now, those who practice law here have hands and they seem to have eyes. Now, when you have eyes, you, you get tempted. He talked about something that continues to dog Kenya's judiciary to date, corruption. The justice will dispense under the shadow of the blind goddess. On top of this building, that you come here in these law courts, hoping and trusting that you are going to get justice and you are not going to pay for it. John Job briefly stepped out into the limelight in 2007 when he declared his support for Raila Odinga during the 2007 presidential elections. Since then, he has chosen a quiet life, only appearing on occasional TV interviews. It is with profound gratitude and humility that I have received many messages of congratulations and best wishes for my milestone birthday. Through my many years, I have dedicated myself to the service of my country, my church, and my fellow men. In the civil service, my constituency, of Kikuyu, now Kabete, 
private sector, through all the boards, I have been. I am humbled by what I consider to be my greatest blessings, my loving family, which has expected, has grown over the years. First of all, my wonderful wife and life companion, Margaret, followed by my children, my Rimo, Elizabeth, Mary, one boy, and Josiah David. The family has grown with son-in-law, Foka Basin, and, and Kerry Guinea. I have also had the greatest joy and privilege of grandchildren. To date, six of them, all of whom have the the most uplifting effect on my energy and love for life. For this, I am truly grateful to God. I thank you.